Good afternoon guys, welcome to this installment of Mike's Vehicle Vlogs. Thank you so much for joining me today. We are here doing some more work on the Aztec. Feels good to be saying that, uh, even though all the work is not enjoyable. These power steering lines have been a nightmare. I'm sure it's, it's a lot easier for people who do these lines on an everyday basis, but this is my first time doing it and I absolutely hate it and I hope I never have to deal with power steering lines again. Um, I was actually in the middle of, um, you know, trying to finish getting everything planted and such um, because in the last vlog where we were finishing putting the lines on, um, you know, we kind of stopped for a little bit um, because we got them both hooked up. So both lines are put into the rack there you can see them and we got them routed um, this is our sender line and it's routed there the return line is routed this way the problem that I'm facing is you know I got them all routed up going down here like they should and around the radiator support right there you can see them but uh, I, they, I still think they sit funny, and I don't know why, but you know, like this part here, actually both parts, you know, they're tied down where they should be, but this one is extremely cl close to the the axle, and the other one, I gotta get the that portion finished yet, uh, but it's right up against the axle, and I don't understand um, why they are so close to this, and I'm really afraid that that axle is going to chew those lines up and I'm going to have another leak. Um, but they're routed the way that the old ones came off. Um, so I know, you know, it's an aftermarket line and um, I have a feeling maybe that aftermarket line isn't bent. I stated in the last video when we were actually finishing up this portion of it that uh, the lines, the first set I took back because they really didn't seem like they were cooperating enough. And now this lot, this set here, you know, I, I finally have seated into the car and I'm still having an issue with there. So I might have somebody uh, come help me and, and we're going to take a look at this. And I don't know if we're going to end up keeping those on there or, or what, but I'll have a, a second opinion to see if somebody wants to maybe tell me otherwise. Because I really don't like, I really don't like how they're sitting right up against that axle. That's that's not good so I'm gonna take a break from doing those lines and we're going to do our transmission lines today now for those of you who have been following the Aztec process since I brought it home you'll remember that we for sure had a huge transmission fluid leak um, and I know exactly you know it's coming directly from under the radiator which are where these cooling lines go so both of the lines under there, we'll, we'll even see how bad they look once we get under there. But those lines are shot, and I mean, those lines were so bad, you know, I had to move, when we originally brought the Aztec home, I had it sitting here where the Fiesta was. We had to have it towed home, and since the driveway straight back, we just backed the Aztec right here, and it sat for a few days, but... Um, I wanted to move it over here so that way my wife's space, you know, she can have her parking space back. And just in the process of moving this car from that side to this side, I ran out of transmission fluid and the car got stuck right in the middle of the driveway here. Oh, it's looking foamy now, yeah. So I had to go buy a couple of quarts and we, we threw a couple in and they leaked out within a matter of minutes. In fact, the... Uh, I still have some of it in the car. I tried to save some of it. Uh, so yeah, the lines for sure are completely shot and we're gonna get rid of those hopefully right now. So the cooler lines both go into the radiator and I got some various hoses here. We're gonna end up replacing this one too. I don't like this. This is an oil cooler. It goes straight to the oil filter and it is completely shot so we're going to replace that soon also so anyway 
Here's one of our radiator lines. This is probably going to be the hardest one to get to because it kind of sits back a little bit. It routes itself, it bends there, and then it goes under the radiator support, down and under, and to the transmission. The other one, which will be easier to see down the bottom, is right there where that yellow thing is. That's actually the retainer clip for the C-clip that holds the line in place. Um, but we'll probably that might be a little easier to get to it from the bottom because it's toward the bottom of the car and we'll be under there. So there's both of our lines there. If we get under the Aztec, you'll see. Oh, there's a, well, there's a wiring harness here, so might have to maybe move that somehow. But um, yeah, here's our lines right here, one and two. You can see where they start to rot. And both lines here are just gross. Here's our new steering line. Again, I can't get it to seat right. So it's it's just kind of sitting here. I might have to get new clips for this actually because the factory clips, you can see how wide they are. I don't I don't think they work for this line for some reason. They're all bent out of shape and I can't get them to sit. So we're just gonna leave that for another day. But um yeah this line here I could I'm touching the line and stuff's just falling off of it. But you can see the grease, you know, the, the fluid. And you can see the they turn into the rubber hoses, and those hoses go shortly around here, held on to that little bolt there, and the lines themselves attach to the transmission right there. So again, this will be a first. I'm hoping this process will be a little easier than these power steering lines, um, but there there are other things in the way like these harnesses so I don't know I'm kind of afraid to move these only because uh, I'm kind of afraid to move them because this rust oh, I don't want to lose the the harness hole but we could probably just take a screwdriver and um, you know just open up these clips and get the the harness out of the way a little bit um, this one line attaches here actually I wonder if the other line's supposed to be there. I don't know. That's really weird that it has two spots, only one of them is being used. Uh, the other line, see it's kind of tough to get to. I probably could have done this without putting this line in yet, but whatever. Probably should have done these ones first. Yeah, so it'll just come out, come out of that little plastic thing there. Now, there are fittings. Let's see. Oh, there's a web there. Oh, God, a bunch of rust just fell into my, my hair. <laughs> oh, this is a great car. Anyway, so there's fittings on there, as you can see there. Um... And I didn't buy fittings. I didn't think that I was going to have to get fittings. Uh, but I don't think there's any leaking from the fittings. I just know for a fact right there is where the transmission leak was coming from. So I'm not going to replace the fittings. Um, we're just going to do the lines. The nice thing is... If I have to replace the fittings because of how easily that these lines are supposed to be coming out, um, I could always just replace the fittings at another time. And that means, you know, we'll have to drain the transmission again, but that's all right. Um, but the fittings seem to be good. Uh, we're just going to do, we're just going to do the lines. So we got rid of the webs. I should have got rid of the rust so I can get under here a little bit better, but that's all right. So what we're supposed to do is there's, oh my gosh, there's these little plastic retainers here. You could just take a screwdriver and just kind of pry it out of the way. Oh, this is going to be a treat. Guys, I might end up buying new fittings. This looks awful. Holy crap. Wow. 
sheesh. This is awful. Wow. Well, I thought there was supposed to be a C-clip there. Um, the C-clip is supposed to hold on the line, and then when you pop the line off after you remove the C-clip, you take your ratchet and then you take that fitting out. Same with that one. That's what my impression was originally. I thought these were quick connects and I can't really tell because of how rusty this is, but holy crap. Let's see. Another, there's another plastic thing there. It's a weird spot. Same with that one. Well, I don't know. Those are so rusted. We might go by, uh, we might go with the hacksaw way again since we gotta take them out. And uh, now that I know that those fittings look, look like that, I'm, I'm gonna have to buy new fittings for these lines. Oh man, sorry Russ just fell into my, uh, my eye. Yeah, this line you can kind of see it a little bit better because um, that clip is already, or that retainer is already off, but there's a C-clip there. You can see where it's in there, the space. So it's a C-clip. We can take either this flathead or a pick. Um, I don't have a pick, unfortunately, but if I can't get this off with the screwdriver, I might have to go get one. But you should just, oh my gosh, this whole car is falling apart. All right, so instead of chopping off the lines and stuff, I decided I should probably just go buy a pick. So I bought a set. I'm gonna need them anyway for when I try to scrape out the ports in the engine block, but I took my pick and just grabbed the edges. These aren't very big. They're not as, as thick as you would think they would be. And that's it. So from there, and this is gonna be the interesting part, but the line should just come out of there. Got a little bit of fluid left, not much. My basin, of course, is over there, so now I'm gonna have a mess. Stuff that I didn't think about. <laughs> there shouldn't be much in there. Um, because like I said, it all pretty much leaked out. All right, so the, that part of the line is free. I may actually have to, I may actually still have to cut off the ones on the transmission, um, but I ended up going to get um, the new fittings for those, these are what they gave me, so we're going to replace both of them on the transmission, and I don't really think that the ones over here on the radiator are gonna need to be replaced they they still look fine but the ones on the transmission as we looked at a little earlier are awful so I gotta get some gonna get some kitty litter and I'm gonna put it down there's actually a lot more in that radiator than I thought why spend money on like expensive absorbent when this kitty litter is like a dollar and it works just as good so I'll let that sit there and uh, Okay, so that line is free. I have no idea <clears throat> which line that is exactly. If that's our sender or our return. I get my pick. Because I'm pretty sure if I tried to pick this, uh, I just got rid of these webs. If I tried to pick off of the, yeah, I'm pretty sure I can't. Can't even really. It's probably fused on there, so I may have to just cut this one off and then use a uh, socket to actually get that fitting out of there. But like I said, I'm not sure what line I cut exactly, so 
Let's go up on top and we'll try to get that other one off. Okay, so that other one's right there. I might need two hands to do this though because I don't know how well this easy this is going to be to get to. With just one hand, get your flathead screwdriver. And uh, I think it's in there. Yeah. Pry away that little that little plastic tab. There we go. Okay, and then there's our our fitting right there. It's gonna be a little tough from this angle. Can't really see the clip. It doesn't really help too that the car is elevated a little bit, so I'm having I'm at a little bit of a, a little more height over here than normal. All right, so that one, that one took a little more time. Let's put this here for now. You can see I got just enough out there, so I should be able to grab it now. There we go. <clears throat> this line's higher, so. I'm hoping there's not going to be anything falling out of this one, but oh, yeah, there we go. All right, so we got both of our lines out from the radiator. Not that bad. Definitely easier than these steering lines so far. But now the challenging part's going to be me probably trying to cut these lines off from the transmission. Okay, so what I did was I hacked it. Then I took a flathead screwdriver because there's only so much room to use my puny little hacksaw. But once I cut through it, I took a flathead screwdriver and a hammer and I just kind of chiseled into it. And now we can see it's this line is cut free because that I can't even find the uh, the clip on there. I tried picking at it and nothing's coming off. So that fitting is completely toast now this one the one that goes upward where is it right there uh, that I don't know if I'm gonna be able to really do that one the way I did this one um, uh, so let's I guess let's give it a try all right so took a little while longer to hack Got the chisel, that one's done too. Fluid did not come out of either one of these, so it was completely bone dry from this end. So that's it, all of the lines have been disconnected from their, from their places. The only thing that's left, I do believe, is we need to undo this clamp here, which holds both those lines in place. And uh, I have no idea what size uh, socket we're going to need yet, so let's find out. Okay, that is going to be a 13 millimeter. Yikes, it's tight. She's coming. There we go. That's out. Well, now we get some fluid. Well, there's a dip there. <laughs> Didn't think of that. So, all right. Well, needless to say, looks like that's a clamp that's similar to what we were using for our power steering lines. 
hopefully it'll be a little bit easier to work with. So now we gotta get this clip off. Oh, I'm afraid to bend it back, but hopefully. Okay, so we'll do this one first, I think. Uh, we may have to take that off. I'm not sure. We'll work around it. Maybe work around it. I don't know. Okay, so I had to pry this wiring harness or this hose. I think it's a hose. Yeah, it's a hose. Looks like a hose. Um, had to pry it from the body. Hopefully, I'll be able to get them back where they go. But there's two clips here. There's one here and one here. I just pried it right out with how rusty this is. I doubt I'll be able to get them back in there, but um, that's probably going to be one of the only ways to get the lines through. Let's see. Uh, <laughs> oh, boy. Okay. This one's coming along. This is the one with the weird curve on it. And, alright, one out. This one is the one that goes straight up, isn't it? Yep, straight up. Right down. It's going behind all these other harness or wires or hoses or whatever. And, alright. And the nice thing is we didn't have to cut those up too much, so we'll be able to, you should be able to match them up perfectly with uh, the new ones. Alright guys, so here's our lines in comparison to the new lines. And, uh, yeah, it looks like, looks like they're pretty similar. These lines were made from a different company compared to what the steering lines were, so... Hopefully we don't run into the same issue. They're also smaller. Hopefully they'll be easier to work with. But I think this is the one that might have been leaking. Uh, my guess is that this is the sending line because of how much was coming through it. And uh, I bet somewhere in this area is where it was leaking. So I don't know for sure. I mean, it could have been the other line, but just looking at this area here, it's all flaked, and I bet there's a crack in there somewhere. But both lines are bad anyway, you know, might as well do them both. So, this is going to be the one that goes up to the top of the radiator. And this one here, my guess is maybe the return. Um, so again... I know it's kind of weird because they're kind of bent already, and but these look like they follow a good path. And this side up here, so we shouldn't have any issues with that. Oh boy, oh boy. Yeah, this this one still has fluid in it, so <laughs> that this one here is most likely our our culprit. But this is the one that goes at the bottom of the radiator and also has that loop that goes upward into the transmission. So hopefully this won't be too bad trying to get trying to get these um, lines back in. I think I'm going to start with this one. We'll just attach them to the radiator, route them up uh, underneath all this stuff, and then uh, you know, we won't hook them up to the transmission quite yet, um, being that I'm not able to get those fittings out of the transmission yet. Uh, so yeah, putting them in shouldn't be that much of a challenge. Um, it's pretty much the exact same order as, as taking them out. We'll route this up to the point up here where this one goes. And then once we push it into the fitting, we just take that C-clamp, that little C-clip, right there, and we lock it in. And that should be it for that. Once we get them both in, then we'll 
we'll put them back into that clip on the transmission, put that 13 millimeter bolt back in and lock them down. Got this line up here. I started to try to get it in, but trying to fit them into the, uh, trying to fit them in there doesn't really seem, uh, seem like it's working out too well. Like they're going in, but they're not staying in. And uh, I'm really hoping that they're gonna fit. <clears throat> But I got that line coming up here. The other line is sitting next to its fitting there. And right now they're both just kind of running loosely up over to here. And, you know, once we get them all situated, get those other fittings off, then they'll obviously be attached there. And hopefully, hopefully they'll work with this brace. But I won't know that until... We actually get them, you know, completely routed up. And an, an exhaust stud fell when I was hammering one of the lines off the last, uh, one of the last lines off, so. That's funny. All these random exhaust studs keep falling out. Alright, so I was trying to get these fittings out of the transmission. They are very rusty. I went and got a new can of PB Blaster. I'm trying to get whatever's left of this one but I figured I was gonna need it and so far it seems to be working so turns out at least the one fitting here it's a 3 8 so I had to go buy a deep well 3 8 socket and it's finally breaking free I don't know how much fluids possibly gonna be in here or not Not much. Alright. It doesn't really look like the same kind of fitting they gave me at the parts store. Uh, okay, so the one there. <sighs> hoping it's still 3 8 because uh, it's either that or it's, it's rounded out. So this... This could end up badly for this particular fitting here. I'm not going to be very happy about it. Well guys, as suspected, it kind of got rounded out or something. So as of right now, I honestly don't have a solution to getting that second fitting out of there. And uh... Yeah, so I honestly think I'm just going to wrap this particular vlog up. I kind of developed a migraine and uh, not feeling too well, so I don't really feel like finishing this. But, uh, I mean, essentially, there really isn't anything else to it. Once once those fittings are out of there, you know, we're going to replace them with the, the new fittings that I bought. Uh, and then... You know, put the new fittings up into the transmission, reconnect the, the lines to the bottom, and then reconnect the lines here at the radiator. This one is kind of giving me a hard time, and I think it's because of the angle that this line is bent at. But it doesn't really want to go into the fitting all that well. So that's going to have to be something else that I'm going to have to play around with. And I, I don't know, I don't feel like doing it right now. But, uh... Yeah, then once the fittings are in there, we just snap those little C-clips in there, and that's it. So, you know, essentially, we have the power steering and the transmission lines on the Aztec done uh, for the most part. So, yeah, there really isn't too much else. I don't know when I'm going to get to a solution for the seized uh, fitting. I'll have to talk to my friend about that and see if he can help me out with it. Um, but, I mean, like I said, for the most part, all the lines are off now. The new lines are on somewhat. <laughs> uh, so that being said, I can, I could probably start moving on to doing the rest of the engine now. 
and the brake lines, but I'm not gonna really document the brake lines because that's going to probably be like an all-day project or something with my, my friend and I. But I'm hoping we can get the, the brake lines maybe within the next week or so. And then, uh, then I could start cleaning all this up and maybe, just maybe, start putting it back together. Uh, there's a couple of things I still have to get, um, which might hinder me putting it back together, but I'll have to see what I can do. So guys, if you enjoyed this vlog and you're happy that we've managed to move on a little more in some ways with the Aztec, give this video a thumbs up, comment, subscribe, check out teespring.com slash store slash Mike's Vehicle Spotlight for all of your MVS and vlog merchandise. That's really all I've got today. I'm going to go lay down, close my eyes for a little bit, and hope that this migraine goes away. I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Take care.